This is Disney Travel Tales, a trip report show helping you to become an expert at navigating your next Disney vacation. Join me every Friday for all things Disney related. Not traveling to Disney anytime soon? Never fear, we are still the show for you. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in someone else's trip. All the joy, none of the stress. All right, if you're ready, let's get to today's show. Hello and welcome. I am Jenny, your host, and today you are listening to episode 120, and I am answering all of your questions. I have been gathering questions for the past few weeks because I kept putting this episode off because of just different things going on, and I am excited to answer them. So let's just jump in, but real quick, a couple of weeks ago, I had posted a an episode about mine and Asher's pre-trip report. We leave tomorrow for our trip. Make sure you are following along on Instagram. I am going to take you with us on our trip. Um, It should be epic. Should be great. Go listen to that pre-trip report. I've already changed some of the things that we're doing, which is just so typical for me, but I am excited for when we get back to record our trip report episode to see how things lined up. I'm also going to be hands-on using the new Lightning Lane multi-pass and single-pass system, so head over to Instagram, Disney Travel Tales, and follow along for all of our fun. Okay, so let's just dive straight into these questions. I had tons of questions, of course, about the new Lightning Lane system. Uh, The episode last week, episode 119, talks all about what we know about the Lightning Lane so far. But some people, some of the questions were, how do you feel about the switch? I don't know how I feel about the switch until I actually use it. I have already pre-booked some of my lines. Um, I So we have, you know, three rides for each day that are on the multi-pass. We also have single pass rides for each day. I loved Genie Plus. Personally, I knew how to use Genie Plus. It was very easy for me to use. I could stack our rides so that we never stood in a standby line. It was very, very rare that we stood in a standby line. And typically it was just because we had some time to waste and we didn't care. It was never like we really want to ride this ride. We ha- The only way we can ride it is by standing in the standby line because I knew Genie Plus and I knew how to work it. That was never the case. So I don't know how I feel about this new system, just from things that I've seen online so far, some of the availability later in the day is really like not existent. Um, I think because it's kind of a little bit like fast pass and, um, especially if you are using a travel agent, this is where it's going to become, you know, come so handy. You're going to be really prepared for your trip. You're going to know about the system. You're going to know which rides you're going to be able to, you know, book three rides ahead of time. Whereas in the past, if you were not familiar with the system, you know, if you weren't using a travel agent, you would just show up at Disney and you might not even know what Genie Plus was. So more people are going to know about it. More people are going to be using it and booking it. Whereas I personally feel like with Genie Plus, a lot of people were not using it and were not booking it. And so the people who were more experienced kind of had an advantage. With all of that said, I will be using it this week. I will come back and definitely let you know how I feel about it, but I'm... I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping that I'm not going to be disappointed. And I'm really, really, really hoping that we are not going to be stuck standing in a lot of standby lines. Okay, next question. Favorite resort I've ever stayed at. So this is really hard. I feel like this changes as well with the trips that I go on. But if I had to go off right now, My favorite resort that I've ever stayed at would probably be Boardwalk Inn and Villas at Walt Disney World in Florida. So it's really, for me, a toss-up between this resort, Riviera Resort, and Contemporary Resort. They all are fantastic. They all have really, really great selling points. However, the Boardwalk Resort had a couple more selling points than the other ones. And for me personally... It is location. The location to be able to walk to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. A lot of people don't talk about that. You can walk to Hollywood Studios and it is not a long walk. Can't, um, when Aiden and I went, we actually timed it with a boat and we beat the boat. And we're, we weren't like speed walking. We were just walking at a regular speed. I 
love when I don't have to rely on transportation to get somewhere. I love when I can be in full control of getting to the destination. And so the walkability to that, of that resort to these parks is so important to me. On our first day there, we checked in very early. We landed at like 9 a.m. We dropped our bags off. We walked to Epcot. Then we came back in the middle of the day, went swimming, changed clothes, rested a little bit, and walked to Hollywood Studios to end our day. It's just so easy to get around. My second selling point on this resort is the pool and the slide. The slide is fantastic. It is so much fun. We loved it. I probably rode it like six times, which is, I mean, I'm an adult woman and I went down the slide six times because it was that much fun. It's just a fantastic resort. Um, Riviera is amazing. If you could walk to a park from Riviera, it would probably be my favorite resort because it had the best food. It also had a great slide. The only difference was it was January, so I didn't get to enjoy it as much. And the rooms are just gorgeous. This resort is gorgeous. Contemporary loved the rooms so big. Like if you, a family, if I could comfortably, comfortable, comfortably, <laughs> it's really hard to say, stay in this room and have plenty of space and just being able to walk to Magic Kingdom is so great. But there were things I did not like that were really like hard. I did not like. So Boardwalk is probably my favorite. If I had to choose between the three and they were like, you get to stay here, that's the one I would choose. The biggest downside for me at Boardwalk was the food choices. They don't have a lot of food choices, but again, you're so close to the parks. You're so close to Yacht and Beach Club. You can find food. Next question. Favorite quick service dining. Um, I, this is, this is really tough. So I'm going to just say first thing that comes to mind off the bat is Columbia Harbor house. I know this is not a big pick for a lot of people, but we loved this restaurant. We loved the fact that we could get a healthy meal quickly at Disney. It was really, really good. This, uh, Columbia Harbor house is located in magic kingdom It's over by a haunted mansion in the Liberty Square area. When Aiden and I went, we got a room upstairs, a table right at a window overlooking haunted mansion. And I just loved it. This food was really, really good. I'm going to just break it down now because I also had another question that was, which is your favorite quick service at each park? So Magic Kingdom, it's Columbia Harbor House. Um... Epcot is a little bit harder for me because we don't typically eat quick service at Epcot. We just eat at the booths. We actually plan to be eating at more quick service. This trip, we're only eating at quick service. So I am going to try a couple of new places in Epcot. But as of right now, I would say my favorite quick service place is La Cantina de San Angel. It's at the Mexico Pavilion. It has a nice place that you can eat, uh, like a patio that's on the water. So we really enjoyed the food. We're Texans. So give us some Tex-Mex and we are happy for the most part. Animal Kingdom, Forever and Always, Satuli Canteen. That actually might be my favorite quick service across all the parks, but I really love Columbia Harbor House. Those are might be a close tie, but Satuli Canteen is fantastic. It's so delicious. It feels like table service at a quick service price and like time. It's so good. At Hollywood Studios, this one is definitely tougher because I don't necessarily love the food at Hollywood Studios. We, again, trying new stuff this trip around, but for right now, I'm going to say it's Woody's Lunchbox. I did enjoy the tots and the Pop-Tarts are really good as well, so that's going to be my go for now. My next question was about Alani and my overall thoughts on Alani and would I go back to Alani? We went to Alani in August of 2022, I'm pretty sure. Yes. We were traveling to Hawaii for our 20th wedding anniversary, and I thought this is the perfect opportunity for us to stay at Alani. So my thoughts on Alani were, were it was really nice. Like it is a gorgeous, gorgeous resort. Um, the room's really beautiful. The staff is really great. The pool is so much fun. The lagoon is really nice as well. Because of, I think, the time that we went, not everything had fully reopened. And so we did have an issue with the dining. The food options at the resort were not great for us. Um, I mean, everything's open now, so it's a lot different. But that was kind of the biggest problem we ran into. 
Would I go back? I don't know if I would go back because typically this was a, you know, a pretty big trip. Going to Hawaii is a really big vacation. I don't know if I would go back to Oahu in general. I think if I go back to Hawaii, I would want to visit a different island. Um, and I just personally, for me and my family, Alani was kind of a one-time situation. I like to see new things. Um, while we did enjoy it, it is a little bit on the pricey side and there is just a lot more to Hawaii than this resort, but it is absolutely gorgeous. If you are wanting to travel to Hawaii and kind of have a nice location outside of the city without all the hustle and bustle around you, um, if you're really just wanting to only beach and swim and resort, I think this would be a great place for you to visit. We're a little bit more adventurous. So two days at Alani for us was perfect. But yeah, for us personally, I don't know if we'll ever go back. I mean, I always say never say never. But I do think for certain families, this could be a great place for them to kind of visit all the time. Um, Let's see. Another question I had um, multiple times was, what is my favorite ride at each Walt Disney World park? So at Magic Kingdom right now, my favorite ride is probably Haunted Mansion. Um, I also love Tron. So those are probably my top two. Oh, and People Mover. I would say Haunted Mansion and People Mover are probably my two favorites. And then I also like Tron. At Epcot, my favorite ride is Cosmic Rewind 100%. That is probably my favorite ride across. No, that's not. That's another question. So we'll talk about that later. Um, At Hollywood Studios, I would say Tower of Terror is my favorite ride. And then at Animal Kingdom, Flight of Passage for sure would be my favorite. Now, my favorite rides at Disneyland Park was another question. Um, This one's a little bit harder just because I haven't been there as much. I would say my favorite ride at Disneyland Park would be the Indiana Jones ride. I did not get to ride it on my last trip, which I was really, really bummed out about. But it is, I have a lot of like fantastic memories about that ride. So I'm just going to say that's my favorite ride. And then at California Adventure, let's see. I would probably say my favorite ride is the Incredicoaster just because I love coasters and Disney World doesn't have your traditional coaster. And so that is one thing I do love about California Adventure and just Disneyland in general that they have some different things. Now, another question I had was what is my favorite overall ride at any of the parks that I've been to? So in this one, I am going to include Disneyland Paris Park um, in the Walt Disney Studios Park over at Disneyland Paris. My favorite ride in any Disney park that I have visited is going to be probably Space Mountain over at Disneyland Paris. This ride was just stunning. And I think because I had no idea what to expect, I just loved it. It was an intense indoor coaster. You got into the ride outside, which was really cool. I just didn't know. Like when we went to Disneyland Paris, I tried to avoid a lot of spoilers on rides. I had known just from talking to other people on the podcast that had been kind of an idea about the rides, but I had no idea about Space Mountain and I just loved it. It's like Star Wars themed. It is so, so much fun. A very, very close second would be Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris as well. It's just spookier than Haunted Mansion. I already love Haunted Mansion, and it is just the best version of it, in my opinion. This was a really fun question. My next one was, if I could live at any of the parks, which park would I want to live in? Um, I just love this question on so many different, for so many different reasons. And I actually kind of had a hard time thinking about like really thinking which park would I want to live in. But I think if I could live in any of the parks, I would want to live at Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. And here's why I, if I could choose, I would want to have my room in the castle. So I would want to live in the castle, but also having the main street, I would want to be able to go in and out of those buildings and just have full access to that as well. 
Um, I just love the vibes at Magic Kingdom. Um, it definitely totters like on, is it my favorite park? I don't know, but I would want to live there. And honestly, Epcot is a very close second for me, just with being in the world showcase and all the options of the buildings that you could technically live in. That's definitely a close second. I would probably want to live in France, but those are my two top parks that I would want to live in. Another question was, what is my least favorite resort I've ever stayed in? Um, I honestly don't have a least favorite resort because for different reasons, I've loved every resort I've ever stayed in. Now, don't get me wrong. The deluxe resorts are much nicer than staying in the value resorts for lots of reasons as well, but I do love the value resorts. I've stayed at All-Star Sports and Art of Animation, which Art of Animation to me is really more on level of a moderate resort, but it is technically a value resort. But I loved both of those for the time that we were there and the experience that I had with my family. And this is something I tell people all the time when they're planning their trips and they're just not so sure about those value resorts. I'm just like, you're going to love it because you're going to make your own special memories there. Of course, out of all the resorts I've stayed at, All-Star Sports is probably the lowest on the list of like amenities, cost, everything. But I have some of my fondest memories of that resort because that was our first Disney trip. I can remember coming back from the parks and the boys playing football on the football field because we stayed right outside the football field with all these other kids. And so while the amenities and everything might not have been there, that resort just has such a special place in my heart and I love it. So for this question, I just don't have a least favorite resort. Um, I have loved all of them. I think Disney resorts are fantastic and, you know, meets a need for everyone. Next question is if I could add anything to any of the parks, what would it be and why? I feel like a broken record saying this because if you are, you know, in the Disney universe online, then you hear people talk about this all the time, but I would add a Tangled theme restaurant to Fantasyland and Magic Kingdom. I would take out the bat, the tangled bathrooms right there where the tower is. And I would turn that into a restaurant, a character meal. I just think it would be so much fun. It could be the snuggly duckling. I, I mean, come on, Disney. Why are you not doing this? Like that would just be so fantastic. I don't even need a ride. Give me a restaurant with a really fun theme. And I'm good with that. Kind of along the same lines. I could add another country to the world showcase. Which one would it be and why? So this one I actually thought about for a second. I thought about the countries that are already there. And then I started thinking about regions that are kind of not represented. And that would be South America. I would add a country from South America and I would probably choose between Brazil or Argentina. Either one I think would be really fun. I think they could do a lot with it and introduce the culture to a lot of new things. So those would probably be my top choices for adding a country. And then if you really wanted to go just off the rails, what if they added like, which I know this is a continent, but what if they added Antarctica? Like that would be so crazy and just serve like ice cream. You could have like almost a penguin ride or I don't know, like a deep sea expedition type ride. I think that would be really fun and just totally, completely different. Hi, this is Jenny, just popping on with some exciting news. I've started a Facebook group just for you. I'm really excited about this because not only will this be a great opportunity to get to know each other, but this is also a safe space to talk all things Disney. Members can share travel tips, resort tips, likes and dislikes, and the best part is this will give you an opportunity to talk to the guest on the show and ask them questions about their trips. I was trying to think of a fun name for us and Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse came to mind. This is a private group, and of course, I will not allow anyone to be bullied or talked down to. I just want this space to be positive and fun. 
Check the show notes for a link to join or just search Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse in Facebook. I can't wait to see you over there. So the next question is another favorite type of question, but it's kind of a lot larger. So I saved it. I saved it for later because I, again, I had to really think about this one. So it asked, which is your favorite Disneyland, Disney World or Disneyland Paris? So I've been to all three. I enjoyed all three. I love all three, but forever and always my favorite will be Walt Disney World in Florida. It's just home to me. It's the first Disney park that I visited. It's the one I visit the most often. I'm very comfortable there. And so because of that, it just feels like home. After that, I I honestly don't know. I do love Disneyland. I love the history behind Disneyland, that Walt was there. It's the only park Walt's ever walked in. I love all of that. But I also love the specialtiness of Disneyland Paris and the uniqueness. Like if I had to sit and think about all of my favorite rides out of all the Disney parks, majority of them are at Disneyland Paris. They just did rides so much better than they do over here in the States. And I honestly don't know why the Indiana Jones ride there is so much fun. Um, Phantom Manor, Space Mountain, the, they have a Avengers coaster. That's like a rock and roller coaster, but Avengers themed so good. Um, they just have a lot of really, really great rides. And especially with adding the new frozen land, I think for me, and I know if you listen to my Disneyland Paris episode, you're going to be like, really? But I think I would go Walt Disney World in Florida Disneyland Paris, and then Disneyland in California. I do think what the changes are going to make in California, it will be a lot more, um, it'll just, you know, give it a nice update. Another thing is I love the Disney themed hotels and in California, there's just not enough. So for me, it just doesn't give you that really destination vacation feel as, um, Disney world does. I mean, Disneyland Paris doesn't necessarily either. I don't know. I'm scrambling at this point, but I would go Walt Disney World always and forever in my heart. And then um, Disneyland Paris and Disneyland California. Next one is what is the number one next Disney destination you want to visit? Um, This is a toss up. I would love to go on a Disney cruise. I've never been on a Disney cruise. I've never been on a cruise. So going on a Disney cruise is kind of at the top of my list. It's the most realistic Disney destination for me to try out next. I've already looked at some for next summer for a Mediterranean cruise. I've looked at an Alaskan cruise. So we will probably probably be booking a Disney cruise for next year for sure. As for a park, of course, at the top of my list is Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. I want to visit those parks so bad. We had actually talked about going this year. It just wasn't going to work out timing wise and everything, but that is at the top. I want to get there. I want to enjoy it. I want to go to Japan in general. So that would definitely be the next I wanted to visit. Hey, it's Jenny just popping on real quick. Make sure to stay up to date with all things Disney news, all things Disney Universal cruising related by following me on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. You can also find me on Facebook at Disney Travel Tales as well. If this episode is making you want to plan a Disney vacation, then I would love to help you. All of my services are completely free to my clients, so there really is no reason not to use a travel agent. Most people don't realize that when you go and book your own Disney vacation, you are already paying that travel agent fee. So why not take advantage of that and get all of those services that you're already going to be paying for? I would love to help you plan your next trip. So make sure to check the show notes for information on how to get in contact with me, my quote form, my email, and yeah, let's make 2024 the year you go to Disney.
Okay, next question is, if Disney was to open a whole new park, where would you want it to be? Of course, I would want it to be in Texas. <laughs> it's where I live. There's been rumors for so many years about Disney opening a park here. I live about 30 minutes from where Disney owns a bunch of land already. I'm starting at this point to think it's going to be one of these neighborhoods that they're trying to build, but... I would love a Disney park here in Texas, like dream come true. 100%. I think the heat could be a problem. It is hot in Florida, but it is a lot hotter here in Texas. Um, and it's just a different type of heat, but it would for sure be my number one choice for a Disney park. Another question would be if I could retheme any ride at Walt Disney world in Florida, which would it be? And why? I would 100% retheme Rock and Roller Coaster. While I love Aerosmith, and Aerosmith was very popular in my generation, there's a lot of kids and young adults who are not that familiar with Aerosmith, and that ride is just so outdated because of that. Being at Disneyland Paris and seeing how they reimagined Rock and Roller Coaster to Avengers was just really, really cool. That ride is a great. It's like a mix between Cosmic Rewind and Rock and Roller Coaster. They could do so much with this ride. I've heard people talk about retheming it to the Muppets, which I'm also, I could totally get behind. Um, you know, the Muppets aren't as popular anymore, but I still think they're very familiar. But I that ride needs a retheme. So I would either go with the Muppets. I don't think they can do an Avengers retheme just because of... Um, some of the superhero stuff in universal. So that might not work, but you know, okay. So it's over there by lightning McQueen racer New York Academy. What if they rethemed it to a cars theme? That would be really fun. And you might actually be able to get younger kids to not be so scared to go on it. But if it's like you're racing lightning McQueen, you're Okay, so that's what I think. I'm going to go with that. I think Rock and Roller Coaster should be rethemed to a Cars Lightning McQueen racing type of ride. The last question I'm going to answer today is what is my favorite holiday theme at Disney? So my favorite season at Disney is fall. I love the Halloween theme, which is funny because I'm not even a big Halloween person at home. But I love Halloween decorations. I love the way Disney does Halloween. It's like a happy Halloween type of, um, you know, not spooky. I'm not a fan of spooky Halloween. I do love the happy Halloween. So going to Disney during the fall season just makes me happy. This could also be a nostalgia thing, but I always recommend clients, if you are going for the first time, go during the fall. It is just fun. You will love it. So thanks for listening today. Make sure you are following me along. We leave. Um, I keep saying we leave tomorrow. That's because I'm recording Monday. So when you were listening to this Friday, we're actually on our last day at Disney. <laughs> so go back and if go to Instagram, you know, check. I'm going to do a highlight reel, follow along, go back and see, ask me any questions. And yeah, it'll be a great trip. I'm excited. That's a wrap on today's show. As always, thanks for listening. Make sure to visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. If you're wanting to support the show, the best and easiest way to do that is to leave a five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy and means the world to me. Can't wait to be back next week with you. So until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams come true.